Let's check in with our wedding bells. Where would our brides be without them? Hi, I'm Aubrey. And I'm Sarah. And we are the wedding bells. I just got engaged. And I did not. We're on an adventure. Plan the big day. Over the centuries, women have used berries to stain their lips, ox blood to improve their complexions, and even burnt matches to darken their eyes. Dark eyes at a wedding makes you look like the bride of Frankenstein. So I took Sarah to BFF, best face forward. BFF is a team of freelance makeup artists working at a base location or mobile. It is important to have a professional makeup artist. You're spending the money on the florist, the location, the photographer. The more stresses you can take away from that, that day, the more you can focus on oh. saying your vows. Traditionally, bridal colors are browns, pinks, purples. Pink on my eyes always makes me look like one of those rabbits. You know those rabbits that are white with like the... Oh, totally, babe. Sarah certainly didn't look like a rabbit. And voila. Oh, I look so pretty. Sarah looked fantastic. And on the big day, Sarah M says, so just let the tears come, let them flow. Crying actually doesn't smudge our makeup. It's how we wipe away the tears. Smudges our lot. Yeah. Aubrey loves the nightlife, so chances are she's gonna sleep in on my wedding day. I'm late for showing you for getting your makeup done because I was out with all the groomsmen last night. Good thing that BFF yeah. has a perfect solution. Five minute face, here we go. Five minutes was up. This looks better than the 20 minute face <laughs> I do on my own. Okay, time to shop. Because it's a destination wedding, we need supplies. What are the key things that you need to take with you? Foundation, hands down, and never leave the house without it. Oh, I don't leave the house without mascara. It's terrifying too. <laughs> I leave the house without mascara. Uh-oh, <laughs> learning. Blush, of course. If you're going somewhere nice and sunny though, then it might be a better idea to bring a bronzer with you, just so you have a better glow going on. For fun, I proposed a contest. Find everything we need in two minutes and spend only $100. Lipstick. I bet you Aubrey's gonna cheat and all go to one counter, but I think it's best to blend a whole bunch of different brands together. I am going to one location, the prettiest one. Mascara, mascara, mascara. Primer, tinted moisturizer, moisturizer. I am clearly running out of money and out of time. Done. Okay, let's go tell you. Bada boom, <laughs> 254.24. Makeup is expensive, that's why I don't wear very much. I'm $55.67 over budget. So the only thing that she really missed was her primer, but I am glad that she picked up a waterproof mascara for her wedding because obviously there's going to be a few tears going on. Are you going to cry? Oh yeah. Really? Oh, I'll cry. I cry at all weddings. That's so nice. No, and yours, of course. Because it will be finally over. <laughs> Just kidding, Sarah. I can't wait to see your fabulous face on the big day. For Shaw TV, wear the wedding bells. Cuisine is also a very big part of organizing a wedding. This 43-seat intimate bistro is the perfect setting for a small reception. And if you're looking for a perfect read, you'll find it in Squamish. After the break, get under the covers of Literacy Week in Squamish. It's uh, described sometimes as the, the Velcro that allows all kinds of other kinds of learning to happen. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by Artina's Handcrafted Canadian Jewelry, 387 Water Street in Gastown and Government Street in Victoria. Championship Curling is live on Shaw. The best women curlers of BC are set to battle it out in Cloverdale in the 2011 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts BC Women's Curling Championship. Tune in Saturday, January 22nd at 6 p.m. Pacific for the semifinal and on Sunday, January 23rd at 2 p.m. Pacific for the final to see which rank will be crowned the best of BC. Provincial Championship Curling, only on Shaw. Nice shot. You're watching Shaw TV. Welcome back to The Express. I'm your host, Nicole Fitzgerald. And there are more than nine different restaurants to explore in Whistler's fine dining scene. Newest to the roster, the Ulta Bistro. 
it's that time of the show again. We're heading out of town, and this week's road trip takes us to Vancouver Island with the Maritime Museum. Travel along with us on the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip as we explore the many marvelous attractions and activities of beautiful British Columbia. I've been working and living in Victoria for the past two years and I'm still exploring the region. So whenever somebody says go check out this museum or this show or this area, I have to check it out. So for my road trip, I'm going to step back in time and take a look at Victoria's history and past. I'm a fan of artifacts and just old stuff that has a story. So museums are for me. One museum that's been around for more than 50 years in Victoria is the Maritime Museum of British Columbia. But it didn't start off as a museum. Well, it had a long history beginning being a provincial courthouse. This was the first purpose-built courthouse in British Columbia in 1889. This courtroom is still used for tax court, concerts and gatherings. It briefly became Victoria City Hall in the 1960s, but by 1965 it became the official home of the Maritime Museum. Virtually everything is from BC. There are a few things from elsewhere in the world that have been brought here to help tell the story. The first thing is that it represents uh, the British Columbia, it represents the West Coast, it represents everything maritime. The other thing is we are in Victoria, the capital of the province, and being right on the inner harbour, we can really showcase what's happened here and what's going to happen. Imagine sailing around the world in this small boat. Now this is a, another vessel that made its way around the world. This is actually a dugout canoe that's been modified, added onto it with a top structure to make it seaworthy for, for around the world sailing. Now the one thing most of us know about boats and ships is that speed is measured in knots. But where did that unit originate? It's a chip log. It was a little device that was tossed in the water and would catch in the water, pull out a string behind it very quickly, as fast as the boat moved. Along the way, knots were tied every so many feet and one would count the number of knots that went out in a particular time period. While we use scuba gear nowadays, imagine diving to the bottom of the ocean in this heavy suit. Or how about harpooning a narwhal whale with this massive gun? This is known as one of the oldest operating, or perhaps the oldest operating, cage-type elevator in North America. Okay. One of the cool features of the museum is this elevator. The intricate attention to detail and the elegance of it is amazing. But it's not all old and extinct. This museum has some recent history, some you may even see today. Check out the BC Ferries exhibit or the Naval Gallery. Other than all the gadgets and gizmos and the old boats that make up the maritime history of British Columbia, there's also, you know, the knives and the guns used by pirates and of course this little thing right here. Wouldn't want to be the guy hung on this off a boat. So lots to see and do. The Maritime Museum of BC is open from 9 to 5 daily. In Victoria, I'm Suchetta Singh for Quality Assured Collisions Road Trip. Entertaining and informative, the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip. Weekends on Shaw TV. Always something new and exciting. Another must visit on Vancouver Island, the IMAX. This month they're showing Harry Potter on the big screen. Stay tuned, we've got more stories coming your way. Later on in the show, the ABCs of instilling a lifelong passion for reading. Another good book to check out is Caesar's Way. They've got some incredible tips on training dogs. Or you could just ask your volunteers at the Squamish SPCA and Wagon Whistler. Let's see who's up for adoption this week. Hi and thanks for visiting the Squamish SPCA. Here are some animals we have available for adoption. This is Calliope. She is approximately three years old. She is a spade female. She is quite shy, um, doesn't appreciate being held, but she likes to be pet and she actually loves to have her back scratched. She does get along with dogs and is great with other cats. And she's just a real sweet, quiet cat. So this is Indy. She is about nine weeks old. She's a spade female, up to date with her vaccines and deworming. She's gonna probably mature mid to large size, 50 to 60 pounds. Um, breed is anybody's guess. She's very, very mixed, but she's wonderful temperament and would make a great family dog. Welcome to Wagon Whistler. 
This is Seamus, he's up for adoption. He came to us at the end of October on uh, Halloween. He was unfortunately run over by a vehicle and had a fractured pelvis. So if you think you're the right kind of person to take on a dog who has lots of energy, but will still need some special care for the next little while, this little guy would love to have a, a warm and friendly home to go to. Come and look for Seamus. This is Sammy, he's up for adoption. He's five years old. He's probably one of the snuggliest cats we've had come through. He's an absolute love. He loves good pets, lots of snuggling. He never complains about what time you get home or how much you've eaten. He's the perfect man. If you're interested in getting a cat or a best friend, I think he'd be the man. Love pets, love animals. The SBCA and WEG are always looking for volunteers to care for the Sea Disguise cutest residents. We're going to continue our learning curve today from dogs to dishes and now books. Developing a passion for reading, it's an instrumental part in any child's development. And that's why reporter Emily Cordonier got behind the covers of the Raise a Reader program. So we're going to try and find uh, some home reading stuff. It's Family Literacy Week in the district of Squamish, and Michelle LeBeau is sharing her love of books with her son, Jack. As the Literacy Outreach Coordinator for the area, Michelle knows all about the importance of literacy. We recognize that literacy is really one of the most important thing for people in terms of, of um, being able to participate fully in their communities and to be able to support themselves and their families as effectively as possible. It's uh, described sometimes as the, the Velcro that allows all kinds of other kinds of learning to happen. The Literacy Committee devotes their time and funds to welcoming newcomers to the Sea to Sky and establishing literacy programs for people of all ages and backgrounds. A lot of pre-literacy programming, that's programming for children, and it starts right from newborn uh, babies to come with their caregivers. We're talking about how parents can use picture books to build the pre-literacy skills. One of the most successful ESL programs is aimed at improving the quality of life for senior women of the South Asian community. It builds their confidence, uh, it gives them an opportunity to meet with people and as well as that we do uh, exercises with them every session and we teach them some English. We don't have um, good literacy skills, it's hard to be on volunteer committees, it's hard to advocate for your children. There are a lot of reasons why it's important to have uh, strong literacy skills. On Friday, January 21st, you may notice people scattered all over Squamish selling copies of the Squamish Chief. It's all part of Squamish Reads, and 100% of proceeds from that day's sales go to fund programs put on by the Squamish Literary Committee. So there's no better day to start reading. Emily Cardani in Squamish for the Express. The Squamish Public Library also hosts reading programs for babies and tots. Well, the Express Spotlight also has some ideas to help fill up that social calendar of yours. Let's take a look. The Whistler Community Service Society invites you into the kitchen. Learn how to make healthy, easy recipes while meeting new people for only $10 a class. More than good exercise. Monthly dodgeball games with Luna gets you dodging, diving and dipping. Players must wear sneakers. Admission is $8 at the door. Pull up a chair for some social and card time. Drop-in crib is hosted every Tuesday from 1 to 3 p.m. at the Squamish Senior Centre. The drop-in fee is $2.15. Swish and swirl your way around the world with some prized, affordable finds at the Cup Bistro. Chef Steve Fecco will pair tasty bites to complement the wines. Space is limited. RSVP at the Cup Bistro. We're discovering our own bistro here in Whistler, the Alta Bistro. A very tasty find, and it's all in the details. And that wraps up this week's show. If you'd like to see your story idea on the Express, drop us a line at seedskyexpress at shaw.ca. You can now get our show on YouTube. Just search Shaw TV Whistler. Join us next week. We're going to be at the Squamish Curling Club. So until then, from all of us on the Express, thanks for watching. Nicole Fitzgerald's wardrobe provided by Peak Performance.
hairstyling by The Loft Salon, and makeup provided by Beauty Mark. While filming on the mountain, parking provided by the Fire Rock Lounge.